Welcome back to another episode of Jeepin' with Cool Guy. On tonight's episode of Jeepin' with Cool Guy, we're going to reassemble the 1976 to, I want to say, 81 doors. These are the ones that have the, the grip handle, not the paddle handle. There, I have a video out there of how to disassemble the 82 to 86 paddle handle doors, and that's a lot more complicated system than this one is. But the reason I wanted to do this video is because there's actually a, a couple techniques that you need to do to successfully install your windows and all the other components back into this door frame. So by the end of this video, your doors should look basically like this. And function just like that. How cool is that? Awesome. So let's get to it. So just to describe the game plan, uh, I have completely taken this door apart, so there is nothing on this door. Every bolt, every nut, every piece has been taken off. As far as prepping these things, learn this when I put the first door back together, is that the reason that these things rust out so much, especially on the bottom lip, is because it's folded over metal, so the outer facing folds over the inner facing and the the scraper on the outside of the door lets water in so that's why there's those drain holes at the bottom of the door now you can imagine with amc's capabilities of rust proofing lack thereof that print is a absolute recipe for rust what i would recommend doing is sandblasting this thing as best as you can and make sure that they get that bottom seam from the inside of the door and then just coat that with pour 15 uh, chassis saver uh, that rust-oleum rust converter I used Eastwood's internal frame coating and just saturated that whole inner seam to where the stuff was leaking out so I've basically waterproofed that whole bottom seam so that it will never rust out again. So that would be my recommendation uh, before you go any further. And then also to add that Rust-Oleum rust converter or Eastwood's internal frame coating. Stuff actually is very versatile to any of the internal components. So the inner plates that the hinge plates actually mount to, spray the inside of that as much as you can. Get inside of those chambers and just hose the stuff down because you can wipe it off from the outside and the what that does is it winds up sealing everything on the inside of the door so you don't have the rust from the inside out. So the game plan is to put the stuff in in a sequential order and what you want to do is you want to identify and install the pieces that are going to be virtually impossible to install after you install some of the other ones. First piece of that is the in side window channel gasket that runs along the inside of the window all the way down into the bottom part of the frame. I ordered Fairchild's uh, door seal system collection and it comes with a whole bunch of stuff but the this one you can identify fairly easily because it has these vents in them. Not really vents what they are is their cutouts so that it can go around this joint on the inside of the window and not buckle. This window seal is I think about four inches longer than it needs to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this thing out using the divider support between the, the front quarter window and the main window pane as my guide as to where I should install this from and then slide it in, measure it out and I'm going to probably wind up cutting off about four inches that would fit down here at the bottom part of the door. The other thing I want to mention is that I am replacing every gasket on this door. Every scrubber, every seal, everything on it is going to be brand new. One seal that you're going to need to replace is the one that runs through the inner channel that the main window slides up and down on and it's on the inside of this support arm. This little black tab that I've painted 
screws in down here, so you're going to want to be very careful when you slide it in so you don't scrape up your paint job. Get that aligned visually, and then you're going to want to slide it inside of the upper channel here to the hole where that screw will hold this into place. So once you get an idea of where that actually is, where that's going to, to live, I'm going to mark that as the spot from where this gasket needs to start. Just going to do it with a pencil because it makes it a lot easier to remove. And then I'm going to grab some Dawn dish detergent, some water, lather up the inner part of this gasket, the seal, and just slide it into place. Fold it in on itself and just kind of slide it in. Before you get too far into this, make sure that the slots in your scrubber are going to line up with this spot over here. Recommendation would be to give yourself about an extra half inch of this seal over the tick mark that you've already put in there because when we go to install the windows we're going to actually pull out two or three inches of this thing so that we can install that support, that middle channel. What this does is it gives you a little bit of extra buffer. It's always better to have too much because you can cut it off than too little because then at that point you're screwed. Slide this into the, the channel making sure that both of these lips are even with the surface of the the window frame. So I'm just going to install this real quick down to the point where it enters the door chamber and that becomes a little bit more complicated so we'll deal with that in a second. All right now that I've gotten pretty much over to the door chamber you kind of see how this thing's a little bit too long. So this slot that goes with the door frame ends about right here. That's where I'm going to cut it off. You can you can look in to the door panel here and actually see where it terminates. So it looks like about two inches too long. All right, so now we start getting into the tougher parts. The more you lubricate this thing, the easier this will ultimately be. And here is where it starts to get tough. I wouldn't recommend using anything that's metal, like a long shafted screwdriver or something. So I'm gonna go see if I can find something real quick. I grabbed a uh, paint stick, long paint stick. It's actually one of the really thick ones. But what I'm doing is I just put the corner down into the middle of the seal and just push it in. It just slides right in. Go another half inch, another half inch, another half inch. Wish I could show you this, but it's just it's too tight of an angle to really kind of get an idea. But you'll experience this and hopefully this is a good solution for you. Alright, we're looking straight down into the door frame itself. That right there at the very bottom is the very end of the gasket. So I'm just using that stick and I'm inserting it from this, that big side hole in the door and just pushing it in and we are in. This may not seem all that impressive but when you try and do this without doing this, have fun. All right, now that we've got that main seal in, we're gonna flip it upside down and install some of the hardware that we will not be able to get to once you install the window. First piece of that hardware is the bottom window bumper. This is at the very bottom of the door and take note that it's got two different length flanges on it. The shorter one is going to go towards the outer part of the door. The reason behind that is, is because when you put your main seal gasket around this door, the, the plastic prong that is part of that seal is going to go right in there. And if you use the long side of this mount, it's going to butt right up against that and you won't be able to insert it all the way. So this goes right up through here and then installs with, I think these are a quarter inch um, coarse thread stainless steel bolts. These were originally uh, torque head bolts, but I went with the stainless steel hex head bolts just because I wanted something that was never going to rust out. And since this is basically sitting on the bottom part of the, the door, 
this is where most of the moisture is going to wind up building up. So screw both of these into place. This next piece is the bottom support bracket that main support channel for that window mounts to. This is a very simple folded piece of metal with two welded in nuts and using the original screws, very short screws, I think these are 5 16 maybe, uh, they have the serrated washer, grip washer on it. Just making sure that the the open cavity is facing towards the inner part of the door. And it goes right here, so you want to make sure that this big hole is aligned with that inner hole inside of that mounting support. All right. These things actually take a fairly big Phillips head screwdriver. So once those are in, nice and tight. Again, torques doesn't matter because they got the serrated washers on them. Now we're going to install the window crank arm. When you take your door apart, mark each one of these as to which side they go to because they are absolutely identical uh, from side to side. The only difference is which way the spring winds. So for the driver's side, the spring would be wrapping this way and then the retaining uh, clip of it would be on the top part. But for the passenger side, it's on the bottom part. Other than that, that's really there, there's no other markings on these things. This is held in by four bolts. So you want to insert this into the main bigger cavity in the door and then insert it to where the handle gear points out through the hole. This is held in place by four more of those short serrated washer bolts. And all you need to do is just get the bracket aligned with these four holes here. Now that those are all in, you want to grab your window handle and just put it on the gear. You don't have to, for you don't have to put it all the way on, just enough to where the teeth will engage. And then wind it down to where that arm lands right about there. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky because we're going to insert the, the main window and we have to do it in a certain sequence so that we can put the non-venting window and the upright support in without scraping all the paint up and getting the angle right. It's really challenging if you don't do it this way. I mean if there's another way to do it please put it in the comments and let me know. But as for right now, this is the easiest way that I found to be able to do it. So you want to take your window, you want to take your inner support channel with your gasket already installed, put the arm in first, and then slide the glass into the channel on that support arm, and that should give you enough leeway, room, to be able to slide it in to the back channel in the window frame. And then just lightly slide that down, like that nice and easy, to where the window will line up with the bottom part of the arm. And then you're going to want to take your window slider, which is this grooved folded piece of metal, and the two nuts with their serrated washers on them that go into these plastic pieces slide the arm onto the window adjusting arm and just screw the, the bolts into that plastic retaining clip. The heads on these are a 5 16 Once you get these things tightened down, you don't have to tighten them down really super tight because it's a bolt screw going into a plastic clip. That plastic clip is only there to expand so if you over tighten it you're just going to strip out the plastic and it doesn't do you any good and since they have the serrated washers on them they're not going to unscrew so all you need to do is get them in there with a decent amount of tension and you're good on this inner channel of this rail this arm i would i would put some grease just to make it easy to slide so that it, it there's not as much friction when you go up and down on the window the other part is at the end of this arm on the inside of this is a plastic wheel just like this this is an old one but you want to make sure that this thing's free spinning this one has seized up so i'm going to have to work on this if i'm going to use this in another door but you want to make sure that, that is nice and lubricated wd-40 whatever it is so that that plastic wheel spins freely 
and slides easily with inside of this rail. Now comes the trickiest part of the whole installation. You want to lower your window as far down as you can go. What that's going to do is that's going to give you more of an angle that you can rotate this support arm back and give you more room to slide your front window, stationary window, into place. The other thing I'm going to want to do is I want to take this window with the gasket and run a nice amount of dishwashing detergent, uh, liquid, and water along the front thicker part of the gasket so that it's easy to slide into this channel. Okay, got that all nice and lubed up. So starting from the outside, I'm going to start at the very tip, slide that down and into place. And as you get closer, make sure that this bottom lip is over this flange. You need to get yourself enough angle to where you can slide it into the top. So I was finding it too difficult to do this with the rail in place, so I took the rail off and gave me a little bit more leeway. So again, back to where we were before, kind of slide it in, push the front of the corner down, slide this into place, force it a little bit. I'm going to advance the gasket a little bit, kind of press it in. The other thing I also found works, I know this is crazy, it might make you a little uneasy, but just take a screwdriver, blunt screwdriver, one that doesn't have any edge to it. Kind of just tap the uh, gasket in on both sides and just keep working it in little by little. All right. Well, are we having fun yet? Like I said, this is the most complicated part of the whole window. It's just that wedging it in little by little. Um, one thing you can do if you start getting to the point where the gasket is in but the window isn't sliding into the gasket lube it up a little bit you can peel the uh the back part of the gasket off just use a nice simple rubber mallet and you can tap the glass edge into the gasket so if all else fails that's another way of doing it i've got this thing all nice and seated in gaskets all nice and sealed up so now we need to draw the middle support arm up and screw it into the hole right above the the front window. Now the complication with that is is that that gasket is in the way. Pull this out a few inches just like that just enough to give yourself a, some play then pull and slide your support arm up into that channel because this has a, a, a metal flange that the screw screws down into it. You need to make sure that that's up above the gasket so you can get all the way up to the top. Only need to get that into the plate point where until you can see the hole through the hole in the frame of the flange at the top of the that middle support arm. Once you see that, then take your tiny little screw that you saved from when you took the whole thing apart, screw that down into that plate. Okay, you don't have to crank that down very much, just enough to hold it in place. Now we can trim up this piece. Looks like we need to take off, what, a quarter of an inch? So we'll start short and trim it back little by little. As good as it's going to get for a CJ7. Now that we got that all in place, let's slide the window back up by hand and put our rail back on. All right. That's into place, that's back into place, cool. Now, raise the window all the way up. Don't overdo it, just get it high enough to where you have a little bit more play in your upper support arm. And then, want to take your last remaining bolt with the serrated washer in it and mount the lower part of the support arm through this hole, through that bracket that you had installed earlier. Don't have to over tighten it, just enough to where it's not going anywhere, that serrated washer will hold it into place. And now, you're gonna fully test out your door. All the way down, bottoms out, sweet. 
all the way up. Cool. Yay. Okay, now we're going to go on into finishing up the inner door panel. So on the earlier model, uh, CJ7, the 76 to 81, I don't know if this is the same way on the 82s to 86, I would assume so, but they had this kind of tar paper liner on the inside of the door card. So here's what the door card looks like. Um, it's obviously got the, the window handle hole and then the two holes for the, the door pole. But it's basically just a sheet of cardboard with the, the vinyl print on it with a little bit of foam and then they have these mounting clips. The uh, newer models, the 82 to 86, these are actually plastic, but the earlier models, these are foam lined little metal clips that all fit into these holes across the door. But the way that they were configured is that this kind of tar paper, the black side would go towards the inner part of the door. Like that and operate as a seal for the door card. Well, it's paper. And I don't really know how resilient this tar paper is. So, and th that was to keep water that would seep down through the window into this area from saturating the door card. But I mean, how many door cards have you seen that don't have a little bit of bow to them? The bow is because of the moisture that builds up in here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this heat activated window film and I'm just going to run it around these inner lines right here and then that will be a completely and absolute waterproof protection for the door for the door card from any moisture inside of here. Now there's a couple little holes where moisture might get through but this is really your big biggest culprit. So let's do that real quick. This really is just that the Frost King stuff that you get at your hardware store that you use a heat gun or hair dryer, blow over it, and it draws it really super tight. So you just lay down the tape, then you cut out this piece, stick it on the tape, then you use your hair dryer, and it makes it all taut. So if you've ever done this to your home, you know exactly how to do this. I'm not going to run you through it because it's kind of boring to watch, but it will sh I'll show you the aftermath in just a second. Alright, there we go. That's pretty cool. That I can live with. Alright, peeps, we're getting close. Final stretch here. All you need to do is just press this door card, these little prongs, in through the holes. And it's more of an alignment issue than anything else, so it, it shouldn't be too hard to do. I'm going to start the corner. I'm going to move my way around, adjust them as I go. Flip that upside down so that I can see the lower clips a little bit easier. All in. Man, it's starting to look really good, liking that. There's a little bit of a bow to it, but eh, I can live with that. So now we just do the finishing touches. I'm going to start by putting on the window crank. There is a, you know what kind of a bolt this is. It looks like it's an Allen wrench hex head, but it's kind of countersunk. It's got this really deep head to it. Uh, but that also sinks down really deeply inside of the handle. Grab your plastic backing washer, just so it doesn't rub on the door card. Put on your crank arm. The thing will only go in so far, so once it bottoms out, that's pretty much about as far as you can go. Definitely don't want to over tighten that, because you snap that bolt off, that's going to suck. Let's do the door pull. Door pull, uh, the original bolts are these bolts with the kind of like carriage bolt shaft on it with just a few threads at the bottom. The reason they're designed this way is so that it sits down inside of the plastic of the handle and the extra little bit of unthreaded bolt is just enough to go through the bottom part of the handle 
into the door card without pressing down on the door card too much. These are also torque head bolts. These happen to be a T27. Alright, bottomed out. Don't need to torque it up any more than that. Alright, cool. Let's move on to the door latch. These are actually marked. Uh, right has an R on it, left has an L on it. So it's fairly obvious because of the marking, but also this square hole, which is where the post, the arm from the side handle, enters in, goes through here. If this doesn't line up, then you're obviously using the wrong side. These are torque head bolts. Originals are. These are T30s. And again, no reason to torque down, over torque these things. So here's how these things work. These are the old school handles. As, as simple as it gets. This is the locking mechanism. You push it in, locks it, pull it out, unlocks it. But you can see when I rotate this, it rotates the uh, square receptor for the outside post. So let's put on the outside handle. Outside handle faces towards the front of the vehicle. I guess that's, I mean, if you had it like this, then you'd catch yourself on it, and I wouldn't be a good thing. So, just simply insert that into that hole, and then you want to get the square arm nicely seated on the inside latch. And these, I think, are number 8, 10 threaded uh, machine screws. The originals were torque heads, um, but these things, they had seized up and all four of them broke off when I took them back out. So I am more than happy to replace these things with stainless steel and a nice Phillips head screw because they don't need to be torqued down very tight. They just need to hold it in place, but there's no reason to overdo it. You'll have to rotate the handle down to get to the inner one. Alright, last big ticket item are the door scrapers. Scrubbers. I don't know. They, let's go with scrubbers. Four little metal clips that fit inside of the slot right on the inside of the door in between the window and the door frame. And it's just a matter of sliding this down and in and getting this prong to fit within that little metal slot. Kind of twisting the bottom of it towards the outer part of the door kind of helps that little prong to get over the middle slot. All right, last but not least is the outer gasket. This is the, the outer door seal. Really couldn't tell because there's no markings whether this is for the left or the right door. So the only way that I could figure it out was to take the one corner hard uh, angled corner, put it into the top corner of the door frame, and then just kind of run it around the outside and see if it lines up these uh, inner prongs with the holes that go around the door. That was the only way I could figure out if it was left or right. So this is really easy to install. Uh, you don't need any lubrication or anything like that. Start in the upper corner here, and you just want to get this underneath the lip on the top part or the outer part of the door and the inner channel. Just get that nice and wedged in there and then just move it around the frame itself. If you got a body tool, body trim kit tool, one of those plastic pieces, it could help a little bit. Uh, just for the speed of installing this, but it really doesn't take all that much time. Once you get the top part of the gasket in around the upper part of the door frame, <coughs> Hi Parker. The point where the upper part of the door comes into contact with the, the main door panel, there's a gap, hole, in the back of the gasket. So that should be right at the bottom part, right at this intersection. My only guess is, is that it's supposed to be like a possible drain channel for water that's running down here. So when you're installing this, I have the tendency to find that 
I was stretching the gasket out a little bit and that this piece was winding up down here and these holes didn't line up or the plugs didn't line up with the holes in the door. So you want to make sure that you've got this gap, I think you can, hopefully you can see it there like that. And there's also one over here on the front, right there, that should align with the intersection point between the main door and the top part of the frame. And if you get those aligned, just kind of bunch it up, pull it down, stretch it out, make sure that it fits within the channel. Then the plugs, as they go around the bottom part of the door, will line up very easily. Those very simply just insert into the holes like that. Alright, got the gasket installed, seal, whatever it's called. Alright, rocked it. We've put our door back together, 1976 to 1981 style hard doors. Like and subscribe.